Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Weekly, guys. We got an awesome episode for you here today. We got that huge Spider-Man trailer that dropped and uh, probably about just over an hour ago. And all of a sudden when that trailer dropped, we were like, well, we got to change our show title and uh, talk about that. So we're going to be definitely talking about that in a little bit. Um, of course, I have the wonderful cat comic Uno here next to me. Um, Hello, guys. And she's here, and we're definitely getting Brant. He just told us that he's running a little bit late. So once he gets on here, we're, we'll be talking about Spider-Man. So hang on tight. We'll talk about the trailer, maybe some theories, characters uh, that are in there, lack of characters that we were expecting to see that are not in there. So hang tight with us, guys. And once Brant is on, we'll start to... Um, we'll start talking about it. So until then, until Brant comes on, we will talk about something else real quick. So bear with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, first let's start, start talking about the thing that was announced today, that there's going to be a new Sorcerer Supreme ongoing series. Uh, so obviously we don't know who the Sorcerer Supreme is yet, but we know we're getting a full series with them, which is pretty cool. It also makes me feel like I don't, don't need to read Death of Doctor Strange because I did drop it. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll read issue five just to find out who it is. But I'm like, okay, if they're going to have a whole ongoing series, maybe I could just wait for that. Who do you think it is? Oh, God. Who do I hope it is is the, is the better question. Um, I would love it to be magic. I think that would be cool because I don't think the X-Men has been really use, utilizing her. I can see Wiccan just because they've been pushing him so much in like the recent year with Empire. Uh -huh. Or it could be the Strange Academy character, but I don't know if that's too exciting for most people. That's I, Those are my you, thoughts. I mean, my thought was I would like it to be one of the um, Strange Academy people because it would be something different. Um, but it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really make too much sense when there's stronger, I guess, magicians out there. I guess that's what you want to call it. Like, say, a Scarlet Witch or a Magic. You know, it does make sense to make them one of the Sorcerer Supreme. I don't know else who I would really pick, though, besides that. Yeah, I I would love it to be like a Scarlet Witch just because she also doesn't have her own ongoing. Like, we have to think, like, what's going to sell this book? Uh, but then you could say Jane Foster. Who knew that would sell a book, right? <laughs> when Jane Foster was uh, revealed as Thor. And, and I loved that series. And I know a lot of people did. So maybe it's just a surprise. But I feel like this, this doesn't feel like the Mighty Thor surprise because they built that up so much. This is just like, ah, oh, Death of Doctor Strange. Here's a random uh, Sorcerer Supreme now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, Doctor Doom, that would be funny. <laughs> that would Scarlet definitely Witch be would be good too. I mean, I could definitely see it. I don't know if that just would be the too obvious one, right? I mean, they're making it such a big mystery. Uh, someone mentioned, which I would also love. I love Nico from Runaways to be Sorcerer Supreme, even though they never do it. I feel like if it was going to be Nico, she would have been in the series already. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like they would have, like, highlighted something about Runaways. And I, I would love it to be Nico as, like, just a fan. I also don't know if a Nico book – well, I don't know. Maybe a Nico book would sell. I'm not really sure. I love it to be Nico is definitely the answer on that one. But I think I don't she's a great character. I, I just don't mm -hmm. know – I don't know if they would go that route, though. You know, just because it's like – I don't know how many people actually know her and uh, and if people would be interested in buying her. I mean, I would, you know, but I don't know. We'll see. So that's the Sorcerer Supreme stuff. We also have some Miles Morales what if books coming out. It looks like maybe he's going to be Wolverine. <laughs> it looks like he's going to be Captain America. And I saw <laughs> someone tweet out like, why can't he just be the Amazing Spider-Man at this point? Which is true. Like they're so scared to make him like a more flagship Spider-Man character that they're making him a, a what if Wolverine and Captain America at this point. That is the weirdest mashup, but you know people would be specking on that because they're hoping it to be the next Gwenpool. That that's really what it would be. So it's like, oh, let's mix up two of the best characters in the Marvel universe, Wolverine and Spider-Man, but make it Miles Morales, Captain America, and mash it all up together. I mean, it's a cool little gimmick. I mean, I don't see 
why it wouldn't work or why wouldn't people at least check it out, right? So I check out the Wolverine <laughs> one. I don't know if I'll check out Captain America just because like I don't care about Captain America, but Wolverine right. sounds cool. Uh, it's yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see what ends up happening. It's interesting that Marvel, uh, they just did this mashup event like a year ago. I forgot what it was called. I didn't read it. But remember when they had like, oh, here's magic being like Iron Man. <laughs> and, like, uh, infi- was that Infinity Warps or something like that? They, yeah, Infinity Warps. That's what it was called. And it didn't seem like it did very well. So I don't know why they're like, no, now we got to try with Miles Morales. And now it has to be a what if series. It's like right. it didn't quite work the last time. I don't know why you're you're trying to well, do they this feel again. like what if it's a better selling point i think it's a more popular series so they're gonna be like oh hey you know what if if we put what if on it people love the show people love those comics people love miles morales and wolverine so let's let's put all that together and hopefully it sells right yeah for sure uh we do have a so, question from sweet x oh yeah oh I'm, i was just I putting it on the same there, one. Yeah. yeah uh are you guys you reviewing it. superman issue five or you guys a week behind so we're always a week behind when it becomes the the dc comics um just, just because, for spoilers just because justin it's like no not everybody got their comics today and that's actually us too like we mm-hmm. none of us get our comics today we always get them tomorrow so everything that we discuss is always i guess when you look at it dc's last week's comic books so because also like if you're you're a marvel and dc fan or if you're an independent fan it makes absolutely no sense to go to the comic book store twice a week like for me my comic book store is like 20 to 30 minutes away so that's a, wa- a waste of gas <laughs> like i'd rather just get it the next day and i'm probably not gonna read it until the next day uh, we we have actually a couple questions. We have a super chat, so let me do that, and I'll I'll get Mike Manhattan's question next. Hello, Cat. Hope you're doing fine. Thank you guys for uh, the well wishes on the migraine. They are the worst, uh, but I am doing a lot better. They they normally just last a day. Um, how do you feel about the MCU changing Kamala's powers from being a polymorph to having energy lantern con- constructs? We are going to talk about all the Disney Plus stuff, uh, but I feel like people care a lot more than I do. If it's just a good show, I don't really care too much about where her powers come from or what they look like unless they like look bad. But if, if they're a little different, I don't mind if just the character is the same. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Sometimes they're going to tweak things for the TV series to make it maybe something that they might think uh, might work better, you know, because she is more like an inhuman, right. And then the comic books and then in the show, I think they don't want to, touch anything that has to do with inhumans if you ask me since it was such a failure so they don't want to relate her to inhumans you know yeah no that that definitely makes sense and i'm i'm kind of glad they're going that direction uh we do have a question from mike manhattan what are your thoughts on the light year trailer i mean i'll see it i love every disney well i don't love every disney movie but i love to go see every disney movie uh so i'll definitely see it uh it looked cool I, you know i'm i like toy story a lot i'm it, this is very different i love chris evans uh but i don't know if the trailer gave me enough to say oh gotta gotta go see that it's just so right. different so i'm not yeah really sure. absolutely uh the other thing was from bear i'm gonna skip tevia's question just because we are gonna talk about like all the Disney plus stuff later. So um, we'll discuss that soon. Uh, but bear F says, what's your most excited uh, new series slash event coming up in the next few months? Mine is definitely devil's reign. If we're just talking about events, devil's reign for sure. If we're talking about series, uh, I think we, is it this week where I can actually like, yeah, it's this week. So I'm going to actually go into the next news uh, piece. The Mary Marvel comic looks so freaking good uh <laughs> the one where she's taking over she's uh being shazam the artwork How does she looks so take good. it over though like what happened in that book that she's has that power i don't know i haven't been reading shazam i know i guess she still has the powers that she had before me maybe, maybe billy quits or something i'm not sure but that's so, like the artwork is the same artist who did i think uh half of adam strange and anyone who works with tom king usually is a great artist so um yeah it just looks so cool and i like that they're doing this college angle so they're she's not really a kid uh mm. that is the one i'm most excited for but mike what are you what event and what comic you're most excited for and talk about mary marvel if you have any thoughts well mary marvel would could be something that's cool maybe a little bit different i guess um I'll definitely have to read it to, you know, to see my, my, if it is worth the read for me. Um, God, I'm trying to think of what else comes out. I mean, obviously I'm excited for Hulk that's coming out tomorrow. Finally. I don't think it is coming out tomorrow. I think it is. I delayed think it, again. Huh? Hulk issue one. Let me say. 
2021 comes out. Or is it the 24th? The 24th. The yeah, 24th. So it comes That's out a I, week after. I did an anticipated video for that. That's why I got confused. So I am. I'm anticipating the Hulk. I'm trying to remember what else. What else is coming out? Um, I don't remember. I know it's so hard to keep up with everything. I'm excited for Robins that comes out tomorrow. Actually, so that's I'm not that good. excited for that. You're not excited. I just like no. Stephanie. That's all I, I care mean, about. Honestly, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm definitely looking forward to the Dark Rain event, uh, but. I'm curious what this timeless event is going to do in the Marvel universe on what things it's going to change. Also, I can tell you that I, I am the 10 lives and 10 deaths of Wolverine or whatever that is that that's kind of piquing my interest too, because I feel like I haven't really read a solid Wolverine book in quite a while. Um, the one that Benjamin Percy is doing was just, I don't know. Isn't it, it still Benjamin Percy though? Who's writing it this? Is, but I think maybe me. he could have a cohesive, like a solid story here, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Uh, I just can't think of anything else on the top of my head. You know, I'm sure there's plenty that's going to come out and I just, I just can't remember. And when we obviously. do our most anticipated, we'll shit chat about those when the time comes. Yeah. And the events are so hard because I usually don't like events at all. And Dark Reign's really the only thing that's speaking my interest is an event. Cause it's just like, it's, it's spinned out of something that was actually building up. I always think those are the best events. Like if you look at, um, uh, King, King in black, if you look at, uh, uh, war, war of the realms, like those all were built into from an ongoing series and like was meant to be an event. Uh, more than just like, you know, something like Empire or uh, um, I don't even know what recent events we've had. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, those those are some examples of it. Uh, all right, let's go into the next thing. So we have uh, Batman. is So I am Batman. The, the, uh, the Fox character is uh, moving to New York City. And if you guys don't know, which I'm sure you do, Gotham's based in like on New York City. So now we're just seeing the real New York City, uh, which is, you know, interesting, I guess. But I'm not reading this character, so I didn't have too much of an opinion on it. So is this an Elseworld tale? No, it's a, it's it's like he's in the regular universe. So he's literally so he's literally leaving Gotham to go to New York. Uh huh. This is not Bruce, though. This is like the secondary Batman. Character. This is the chase. Yeah, the Jace Fox character. No, I don't know. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I'm not reading it. I don't need this Batman. So this is like the Miles Morales of Batman. This is basically what it is. It's yeah, because exactly you have a second. Because like with Miles, you have a character named Spider Man, and I think this right. character, I guess, is still called Batman. Right. Yeah. And I and now now he's living in new york too so he's he's in new york with spider-man and miles morales i guess you know i mean it's it's, it's, it's funny i don't they know appear somehow in the comic uh we do have another super chat so new type <coughs> jb says but isn't removing the polymorph powers undermines the cultural clash slash body identity issues that makes her origin stories so thematically important you know i don't think we're the right people to commentate on it but um i'd love to hear you know muslim americans commentate on it and you know hear what they have to say about it i mean and it will be interesting though to see like if they change your powers a little bit though but well, like what's the true reasoning like i know we've heard like bits and pieces but we won't really truly know exactly until the show actually comes out which know, seems like it's going to be late later than we thought <laughs> so <Right. Yeah. laughs> Uh, how would you feel about a new Batman trilogy it was announced, but it's Dick Grayson as Batman, Damian Wayne as Robin? Like as a movie? I mean, I think that'd be really cool. I, I, I'm I'm actually a little hesitant about the Robert uh, Pattinson, Patterson, I think it is, uh, his movie, just because, yeah, we've seen this a billion times. So at least a Dick Grayson movie would be different. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I wouldn't want to see it. Yeah. All right. Let's go yeah. into the next thing. Or did you have another comment? No, I just wanted to say just that for the viewers that just came on, guys, we we will be talking about Spider-Man as soon as Brant comes on. He's been uh, he's he's running a little bit behind. So uh, just hang tight with us and we'll definitely get into that conversation. And also all the Disney Plus stuff that uh, just was announced a couple of days ago as well. For sure. There's a lot to talk about there. Um, but next up is uh, Marvel celebrates 
Carnage's 30th anniversary. Well, Marvel's always celebrating something with Carnage. So here's another Carnage thing. So it's a it's a one shot basically, um, and and what it is is an anthology story. That's exactly what it is, and those are the ones that I'm never excited about because it's just how many different stories can you tell when it comes to Carnage and short stories? I, I those I'm not big fans of. You know, when you've had like when Immortal Hulk ended and you had one long story that worked, right? Same with Spider Man, one long story that works. But when you have anniversary issues that are anthologies, that's probably something I'm going to pass as much as I love carnage as a character. I just don't need to read that stuff. You know, it's just like we had carnage, black, white, and blood or whatever the heck it's called. I don't, I pass on those because those are just throwaway books and I don't need that. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. Unless it's like, again, like a character, I'm like, Oh my God. It, like if it's a spider man, 80th anniversary or whatever and it's an anthology i'll probably pick it up just because it's spider-man but it's got to be it's like a top five character for me to pick up these anymore all right let's move on to uh oh speaking of spider-man so spider-man has a new nemesis a, a character that we've heard the name of but they just switched it around this is queen goblin ex instead of the goblin queen like the goblin queen has been around but this is queen goblin now and she they're really really teasing her to be like the next green goblin so I'm curious uh, to see exactly how she's going to put her her um, her name on the map because that's a that's a big name and some big shoes to fill for sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously Peter Parker's not in the picture, so he can't fight the Green Goblin. So you got to fight the Queen Goblin versus Ben Riley. So of course, there's got to be a Goblin facing some kind of Spider-Man in a Spider Book, right? Um, my thing is, is like I I think it's cool. I just where does she come from? <laughs> you know, where does she get that tech? She's got to somehow be related to Norman in some way, shape or form. Maybe some long lost kid. Is it another it one? Be, I don't think it's <laughs> Lily Holster that used to be menace. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's her because she was recently in a black cat issue and she titled herself like queen cat or something like that, or something weird like that. Um, I, I don't know, but this definitely piques my curiosity. It's a three issue story arc. It is a definitely, a, you know, a little, you know, a little bit of a story there that seems to be more serious. Um, but I am excited for it because it is a different character. So Tabby actually so, mentions a really interesting person. Liz Allen would be a really cool Queen Goblin. Why like, would she I'd, be? They, why? Why? Because they've been teasing some villain stuff with her. Not in the last, not the Nick Spencer stuff, but if you remember the Dan Slott stuff, they were always teasing some goblin stuff with her. And obviously being married to Harry. Mm -hmm. I think she wants revenge. I don't know. Um, I think that'd be interesting. I don't know. I don't think it'll happen. <laughs> There's some other clone kids running around that are uh, watch, watch. You're going to see. Not. It's a clone oh, and it's a did. goblin. Oh God, please no. Do we know who's writing that three issue arc? I don't think so. I don't think the article said, it, uh, but maybe it, it is. Did. Um, I did a video on it on my channel. Um, and I wrote the first issue comes out on February 2nd, which is my birthday. Um, and then I think it's a mixture of writers. I think Patrick Gleason does the last issue. He does the writing and the art. Um, and I think Patrick Gleason on the second issue is with Mark Bagley. And I don't remember who does the first issue. I don't know if it's I mean, either several. way. It's gonna be, is it, it's like, you know, the writers that have been on the book. So right. they don't it's really. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say like, it's a, such a writing room standpoint that it's just like, it doesn't really feel different when another person's writing it. It just feels like the same book so far. It's, oh, uh do you have a question here? Jay says, uh, how do you, how did you like Eternals? Um, I, I, should I say, sorry that you saw it. I haven't seen it yet. I've only heard <laughs> boring things. <laughs> no. So when it comes to Eternals, um, for me, it was the, my least favorite Marvel movie that I've ever saw. Uh, I thought I, I could appreciate the story that they were trying to tell, but however, the story was just too long. Um, and it took too long to develop all the characters. So that's the issue when you have 
that's like saying, let me introduce the Avengers all at once. Where in Marvel, in the early phases, you got introduced to Captain America in its own movie. You got introduced to Iron Man in its own movie. So just imagine all those characters being introduced in one movie on where they came from, what was their relationships like, and all that other stuff. And then they all come to, to come together at the end to try to stop a, sen a sentinel. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. It just took too long to develop. And my biggest problem with the movie is that none of the characters I could get attached to. So, like, even though, like, say, Angelina Jolie's character was really badass and cool, right? She just, there's no personality in any of the characters. There's personality in maybe one character. And... And he wasn't introduced until maybe almost an hour and a half into the movie you, where you get to yeah. see him. And that is my biggest issue with this movie because it took so long to develop all these characters. And just when you think the movie is going to progress, it regresses, right? And it, it's tough. It's a very grand story that they're trying to put in front of you. And, and I think it's just an, a little bit of an overload trying to learn about the Eternals, learning about every single character, who the Sentinels were. It's just very grand. And I appreciate the attempt. It just, it just, man, it was just like too much, just way too much. And then see, I don't know. We'll see the what trailers happens. didn't interest me for it. I was just like, do I want to see because this? Because what so you see in the trailer is just what you see in the movie. Oh, it's just sucks. like, it's, there's nothing there. There's nothing there that there's very little action. And what action that you saw in the trailer, that's basically what you see in the movie. Like that's what they fight. Okay. So, um, like I said, I love, I love the two end credit scenes. I thought that they were really good, but we'll see what happens with it. You know, I mean, the, the characters are still there. And, uh, but it, it just, it wasn't my favorite movie. I mean, listen, I never was into the Eternals to begin with, but I really also wasn't really into the Guardians of the Galaxy either. The two difference between the two movies is the characters are very entertaining in Guardians of the Galaxy, where in Eternals, a lot of those characters are just not entertaining at all. So that that was yeah. probably my problem with it, you know. But I didn't hate the movie. That's just my critique of it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I think I'm gonna skip it for a little while just because there's a lot of other uh, movies coming out. We got um, I want to see House of Gucci. <laughs> uh, obviously, we got Spider Man. We got the new Disney movie coming out. Uh, I want to see Resident Evil for some reason, even though it looks, you know, it's not gonna be no, good. No, it's good. See that. I like it. Looks like really like the video game. Yeah, yeah. I well, I, you have like Robbie Amell, you know, somebody who's like more of a, a B or C list. Not, I don't want to say actor, but he's just more like a TV actor. So it's just like an interesting cast. So, and it's also coming out. Well, it's coming out in November, so we'll see. I, I'm gonna see it. I'm, I'm interested. We do have Brant on, so welcome, Brant, uh, to yes, the show. Sir. Hey um, guys, we're we only have one more comic book news piece, so let's actually just finish it off, and then we'll get to the Spider Man trailer. Um, and then, obviously, Brant, if there's any of the comic news pieces you want to talk about after we talk about this one, you could give your two cents. But the last right. one we have is uh, Radiant Black is getting a crossover one shot, but it's also expanding into other series. So Ryan Parrott, who does Power Rangers, which I love his writing, he's writing his own like Radiant Black in-universe superhero tale. Uh, and then we have that um, Kickstarter, uh, oh, I forget what it was called, Dragon, Red Dragon or something. Uh, who is going to be crossing over in this world as well, which we kind of knew was probably going to happen because Kyle Higgins is the editor of that book. And he was like promoting it at the end of uh, Radiant Black by Love. They're expanding this universe and like Image Comics has like its own, you know, uh, image uh, cinematic universe <laughs> of comic books. Uh, and I love uh, all these creators. So I'm super stoked for this. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. As soon as I saw that that uh, kick, I forget what it's called. Too, I was trying to find it. Red, whatever it was. Um, yeah, it totally looks like it could fit into this universe. So uh, I'm kind of excited about that. 
Um, and I'm I'm sure that comic is going to be worth a lot of money now. The Kickstarter yeah. comic now it's going to be connected to Radiant Black. I think, yeah, I think it's really cool, you know, yeah. putting out Radiant Black in other places and having it cross over. And I just feel like there's a, those those are pretty good you know, grand plans there, you know. Infernal Girl Red, I think, is what it was. Yeah, yeah that's go. what it was. I, yeah. yeah. News read something. Uh, yeah. yeah, it looks really, really cool. And I'm so excited for more Radiant Black in general. Uh, but yeah, Brant, we talked uh, about all the, the uh, comic news pieces. So if there's anything on there you desperately want to talk about before we get into the Spider-Man trailer, uh, let us know. Yeah, I, I'm curious uh, who you guys think Queen Goblin is. That, that was so, really the one. Yeah. We really didn't know. <laughs> we are okay. just like, uh, Tevia said Liz Allen. I was like, oh, that, that's interesting. But That's who I was thinking. Think of. Okay, yeah, so there you go. That's exactly who I was thinking. Yeah, so um, because you know, after finding the stuff in the in the wall that that Harry had there and stuff, so it's yeah, that made me think. Like, okay, that could be it. I, I think it's too predictable if it's monster or menace, like that article was saying. So I'd see, rather I see something so too. Fresh. But she was in yeah. the Black Cat story recently, and so it can't be. It can't be her. I don't. I gotcha. doubt it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's true. So I guess we'll see. But uh, other than that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess I don't have a whole lot to say about the rest of the things. We can move on. It's fine. All right. Unless, well, let's get in. Yeah. Oh, what are you going to say? I was going to say, unless there's anything that you guys want my opinion on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the big one was definitely the the Queen Goblin one. The yeah. other ones weren't too huge. Or, I mean, one question is, who do you want the next Sorcerer Supreme to be? We, we were kind of all over the map on that one, too. Oh, man. I, I don't even know. Um because it requires like this level of responsibility that a lot of, I mean, like from a cool aspect, you know, somebody like magic, right. But from like a logical aspect, it would need to be somebody like, uh, I don't know. Um, man, I don't even know. I'm not well versed on the magic side of uh, Marvel as well as other areas. So what, who did you guys want? Who did you guys think? It's going to be all like over the map. <laughs> Enchantress would be interesting. Enchantress, we said, that uh... would be very yeah. We said Scarlet Witch. We said Nico. We said Wicked, Captain Marvel. Said <laughs> Captain Marvel. Uh, no. We didn't say her, but that honestly, they've been building up, so they've done yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, crazy. I could see Zoe. I mean, just because. I mean, if you think when Doctor Strange got it, he wasn't anything. He had to go like study and you know practice and all that. He had to go through this whole thing. But yeah, they probably want somebody more seasoned. Scarlet Witch. Yeah, I don't know. We will say we'll we'll wait until I think issue five. So I think we actually have like a month left to find out who it's gonna be. Uh, but yeah, moving into that Spider Man trailer, we are so lucky. We didn't know if we were gonna be on the show when this dropped. We were very lucky it dropped right beforehand. Um, so you know the title of our our show is that there's no Andrew, there's no uh, Toby, but there is a Brazilian trailer that supposedly the lizards being punched by nothing. So I think uh, and also <laughs> just like come on, we know that they're gonna be in this movie. It's it's stupid at this fact that. You know, if anyone doesn't think they're in this movie, it just depends on how long and who else is going to be in this movie. I was actually thinking because I was like, what would be the big moment of this movie? Because the, already Andrew and Toby are showing up. It'd be big just to, like see it. But it's not really like surprising because we know it's going to happen. But how about if Chris Evans shows up as the Human Torch and that sets up the Fatality Four? <laughs> like, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> that would be this, crazy. This was an interesting question, though, right? I mean, she's not. Yeah, that's die. what. That's what I was wondering. Like, well, are they doing the grin know. thing with her? You don't know yeah. what she's contracted to be. You can't kill off Zendaya. No. I I, I agree. I wouldn't listen. I don't want her to go. Right. But to throw that out there and to have people guess, like the scene almost looked identical to oh, Gwen Stacy's fall when she and was also alive. MJ too. MJ yeah. too, though, because she had a fall. True. She did have a fall um, because it looks like in this trailer, based off of what we see, is that Peter Parker is going in all to these multiverses and trying to save everybody, and he can't do it. I guess yeah. it looks like he's trying to save maybe Green Goblin or uh, yeah. Doc Ock all the villains. everybody from dying, yeah. all the villains from dying, and he can't do it. It's it's whatever's happening. It's it's inevitable, and he and he is holding that weight on his shoulders there. Yeah. yeah, it was a it was an interesting trailer because I think they just showed enough. They had you know they had the Green Goblin who we knew was going to show up. Um, some people think Harry showed up in the trailer, which it does kind of look like him on the glider. 
Uh, we had obviously Dr. Octopus being like the, the main part of this. A lot of like new, the villains, like Electro, um, uh, Sandman. So, I mean, I'm just super excited for this movie. I, you know, obviously all of us are Spider Man fans here. Like, yeah. We were just talking about Eternals. I'm like, oh, I don't need to go see that, but I'm excited for Spider Man. So, I, I yeah. hope that there are surprises. That's my biggest uh, hope is that like I'm actually shocked when I go to the theater. Yeah, I, I was getting really excited watching this, even though there wasn't like anything major or whatever. I was just like, because I'm such a big Spider-Man fan, I was like getting chills. I was like, oh yeah, I'm ready for this. I can't wait for this movie. So I'm, I'm excited too. And, and like you, I hope there's some surprises in it. So, so there's a couple things in here. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, obviously Doctor Strange is fighting Peter in this because of yeah. whatever he's trying to accomplish. You get to see that happening in here. And uh, he like totally blames Peter for the mess up, you know, because you can hear it in his tone of voice. You know, is Dr. Strange Dr. Strange or is he somebody else that we've kind Mephisto. of alluded to a couple of times? Yeah, Mephisto. Yeah. Um, and then it's kind of cool because at the end of that trailer, you kind of see everyone from the multiverses coming through, um, kind of like how you saw in um, in Loki where you had the, the time streams breaking off, you know, so that was very similar to that, that black suit. What is that black suit? It looks like it's a multiverse travel suit or something, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure either. It looked cool though. Yeah. At first I was like, is this the metal suit? <laughs> Cause it kind of yeah. looked like that, the, the old, old classic metal one, but uh, yeah, I don't know. And it's different. And electro looked more like electro, but kind of not. Yeah, I, it was definitely better than he was in the in the Garfield movie, though. <laughs> so I'll take it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like I, I hope used, they can redeem him. When yeah. he used his powers, it seemed like he had the classic, yeah. you know, yeah. hood on in there. Right. And then you yeah, got really um, cool. the Dr. Octopus scene, which was funny as hell when they have him captured. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, no, who are you really, you know? Oh, what else was in there too? So we got to see Sandman. So Lizard. he looked the same stupid big ass character that I didn't like him in Spider-Man 3. Like, why right. is he so gigantic? He doesn't need to be that big. There's yeah. so many beaches in New York. It's just, it's <laughs> a lot of sand. <laughs> uh, you know, but yeah, no, the trailer looked cool. But don't you feel like, like, I mean, the movie's coming out soon. Did we need another yeah. trailer? Like it's coming out real soon. It's coming yeah, out a month. Like a month. Yeah, right. Yeah, I. You know, I. I think if they had given us something that we didn't know, like just a little tease, something, um, it would have been more impactful. But I, you know, it's still cool seeing it and it's getting that hype up. You know, right before it drops, that kind of thing. I don't think it needed its hype. I think people are going to go Probably. see this movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> People were anticipating that trailer, though. I just think when I clicked on it, it was like 50 million views in like 40 yeah. minutes. So You Crazy. know what's so interesting about this? I love the jokes that people were making on Twitter that they had an event to release this trailer. Like people went yeah. to this event just to see this trailer. Right. I'm like, that's so stupid. <laughs> 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 uh, but then you think about like Comic Cons and stuff. That's kind of the same thing. It's just structured right. in a different way. But yeah. Empire Plus, you know, comics says, um, I heard that the magic webbing from the black suit is what traps the villains in the box. Ah, so that's okay. that. So that box, there was something significant with that box. It's like oh, the yeah. 13 ghosts of Scooby Doo. You can get them all <laughs> back in the box. And he made that Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that's hilarious. Love it. That's funny. I heard there were five other trailers, though. I think there are other trailers from different countries. So like right. that lizard moment that uh, mostly everyone's talking about is from the Brazil trailer that yeah. like he's being punched by nothing. And I, you know, you could tell that's going to be the the third act like that, that lizard and Sandman never coming up. It's like, that's what your third act. So yeah. someone showing up like an Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire, which has pretty much been proven that Tobey Maguire is at least showing up. Like he's been hanging out yeah. with Zendaya. He's been hanging out with Tom Holland. Like that's come on. We know yeah. he's at least going to show up. And then, yeah, Andrew Garfield's going to show up. I'm curious if we're going to get, like, a Miles Morales or a Spider-Gwen. I think that would I be would so nice. That. Yeah. that would Somebody be really cool. Somebody has got to show up in there that we're not expecting. Yeah. It has to. There's going to be something that they're leaving out that they're 
not leaking, you know? Well, think about it. Sony uh, owns Tom Holland's whatever after this. Like, if they bring a Miles Morales or Spider Gwen, maybe the MCU could, like, get out of their contract in a little bit and, like, do those movies and do another mm. set of, like, a trilogy with that character then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. What, so, who knows? what did you think of Dr. Octo? His arms look different. And Dr. Yeah, Octo they did. The, yeah, the, he got, like, a red yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what do they do? Updated. Fix them up or whatever? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, who knows? If, if Miles more Morales functional. showed up in this movie, like, real life, Miles Morales, whew, that that would be huge if he showed it up. It makes sense, too, because we have these, yeah. you know, Young Avengers characters showing up. We got, you know, Kate's going to be in Hawkeye. We got Cassie Lane that's going to be in the next Ant-Man movie. We have... Um, Oh, uh, Wiccan and 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 Tommy, like we have all these young Avengers characters. Like Miles could fit very well in into that. Yeah, it'd be funny if it just switched to CGI for like the Miles Spider Gwen into the Spider Verse. <laughs> oh my god! I was literally yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. about that. Like, how about if you had a scene where it's like half animated and you just have yeah. those characters? That'd be wild. I don't know if I want to see that, but yeah. it could be interesting. Right. What are you uh, hoping yeah. for out of this movie? Like uh, when it done, when it's all done and over with. Like, what what are you hoping for by the time it gets? Over? I want the feeling I had when I watched Into the Spider Verse. That's what I, I want. yeah, that and I want to redeem the uh, the third Spider Man movie curse. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I want. I want Cat's dream. I want Chris Evans in there as the Human Torch. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be only, so wild. Only if we get Jessica Alba too, you know. Yeah, yeah let's get balance Jessica it out I, in there. We'll do. I that. would love to see Jessica Alba. I don't think we would see Jessica Alba. But think <laughs> no. about it. There has been no announcements of X Men and Fantastic Four. There's like a good way to do it in a way, no. you know. Like okay, like I, what's the Fantastic Four? I want to be surprised. I like. Yeah, I absolutely. want. Like, you know, we were just talking about, like, uh, a great character to show up in this movie that nobody knew about. And mm -hmm. when we get done with it, we're like, fuck, holy cow, I can't believe they just did that, right? That yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, because... I'm seeing that Thursday night. I don't want to be spoiled. I'm going to see that right when I can see this movie. I will because be there. <laughs> think of if there was no if there was no internet and like Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield did show up in that movie. Right. Yeah. And of course you don't hear like there's rumors or leaks or whatever it is, or them on set and, and you know, on, on pictures and stuff like that. And you saw that you'd be like, Holy cow. I can't believe they're in this movie, you know, but we already know that the chances of them being in this movie is very, very, very high at this point based off yeah. of all these images that everyone has seen. And, you know, has speculated on at this point. But you not, know? even if it wasn't for that, you have all the villains from their movies. Let's say we let's pretend that we did not know that they were going to show up in this movie. We kind of already knew they could show up in this movie because of what the plot of the movie is. Right. So it's like, you know, it's not like such a huge surprise. Yeah, um, they got to be leaving hope, something out. I hope this builds up to a, a new story for Marvel because a lot of the new stories for Marvel has been from... Um, disney plus shows you know like that's you know scarlet witch and stuff like that so i you know i want the movies to have a big moment as well yeah absolutely yeah for sure all right so well let's be ryan comics said he liked electro he said it looked great yeah for once right <laughs> <laughs> uh let's get into our next topic here uh which brant wanted to talk about the obi-wan sizzle reel yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just kind of, you know, them talking and, and you know, kind of walking you through it. But it, I think it's cool that we're getting um, – God, I just lost his name. <laughs> the guy playing Ovi, what's his name? Uh, Ewan McGregor. No, I don't um, – yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, Ewan and, and Hayden back. Um, you know, I, I think that's cool. I, I want to see them square off again. So, um, And I, I like the way it framed it that – that him protecting Luke was a starting point, and then we get to see that journey from that point on. So, I'm you know I'm excited for it. I've liked what they've done with the Star Wars stuff on on Disney Plus so far. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be good. So let's I get did into... not get a chance to see it. Like when I clicked on the link, uh, it said it was like no longer available. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Why? 
Yeah, I had to look it up elsewhere. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got the same thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't. It was more like uh, you and McGregor just talking to the camera, and like one of the producers or film. I, I don't know if it was the director, producer, or whatever, um, was just talking about the the show. So. We have another comment about Spider Man and credits bring in Venom. I wouldn't want that because we already know that's happening. Because if you saw Venom, we already yeah, know that happens, Venom is like, exactly. going to be in there somewhere, also. All right. Well, let's get into some of these uh, Disney Plus announcements. I'm I'm only going to talk about the Marvel stuff because there's other things too. But yeah, know, the just Marvel do the stuff, Marvel shows. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Okay, so we have the the first look at Moon Knight. Uh, I mean, it was a big trailer, but I'm going to just try going segment by segment. Um, uh, the Moon Knight stuff, what was interesting about that, it truly looked like a Marvel Netflix show. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I don't really care about Moon Knight, so I don't know if I'll watch it. But so it was really seeing cool that, that trailer, though, mm -hmm. Kat, like I mm -hmm. saw that and just in the Moon Knight trailer, I was like, mm -hmm. damn, I, I got to watch this. This looks good. Like, just in that little bit, it had me definitely intrigued. It looked dark. It looked dark yeah. for Disney+. Plus. So I'm curious about that. And again, what that means for maybe, like, the Netflix universe and those characters. Because it definitely felt like a Netflix show. So, confession time. I forgot to go watch the actual stuff. So. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll, I'll They're just... They're all super short. They're all, yeah. like... They're all really, like, make... They're just clips. 40 second, like little teaser clips. Right. Yeah, it's at the end of that thing. I skipped like the first 10 minutes because literally it was just like, oh, do you don't want to know what happened in Winter Soldier? I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, next up we got She Hulk. Uh, this looked cool. I'm super excited for She Hulk. Um, she brought a lot of gen vibes to it. So I, I, liked, I liked it. It looked, it looked cool. Yeah, I mean, I think she's going to be like the Jennifer Walters that we know. Um, she, it was cool that she's doing yoga, and and then you get to see a, a little bit of her, like you know, green self in there also. Uh, so I think this is going to be something that a lot of She Hulk fans are going to enjoy. I'm really excited about this this show. So the other thing we kind of already talked about was Miss Marvel. Um, I'm been very, very like next to Hawkeye. I've been very, very excited for this one. It's just such a shame we have to wait a little longer. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the the teen Marvel show that you would want. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know people are nervous about the powers, but if she's a good character and they bring the G Willow Wilson series to life, which it looks like that's exactly what they're doing, then I'll be I'll be happy. Yeah. Why oh, is yeah, she, why are they changing the powers though? Like. I, I think know. it was uh, because of the look. They were a little scared of the CGI from what I heard, but also just because they're mm. trying to disconnect it to the Inhumans. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I think it's easier for them to do like a a projectile, like a Green Lantern thing. I, if, like Kat said, I think it's easier. It probably costs less on, on money or budget or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah, it might just look, look a little weird. Or maybe it's a Mr. Fantastic situation. They have Fantastic Four coming up, and she literally has the same powers as him. Yeah, so true. that could definitely be a reason. So I'm sure they had a lot of reasons for it. Uh, next up is that Echo's getting uh, a comic. I know nothing about this character, but all we know is it's spinning on, out of Hawkeye. I am surprised at that. I yeah. did not realize that she was going to get her own show for crying out loud like that's pretty impressive actually yeah yeah I, I i i didn't know that either like i mean she there i mean i i guess it kind of makes sense because they're like really pushing her hard in the comics right now so i mean now we know why <laughs> yeah i guess so now you know why she's the phoenix yeah so uh, the next two bigger topics, the other ones are just like, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy stuff we already knew. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go to the newer announcements here. First, What If is getting a season two. So uh, that's cool, I guess. I've not watched any of What If. So Man, You got a problem not watching What If. That What If show know. was good. I and only watched the first episode. So. You only watched <laughs> the first episode? Yeah. It's not just what if this person did that or what that person. This show actually has a purpose. And that's good to if hear. You watch the whole show, you'll see what the purpose actually is. 
Mm. So it's it okay. there there is a reason why the watcher is in this and he does certain things. So I have a feeling that this the second season is going to be even better. It's it's really really good. I I just so, want to have it has a similar it has a familiar feel to it once you get through it on you know why the watcher is watching certain characters. I like the idea that it's twenty minutes long. That's kind of fun yeah. <laughs> instead of having it forty minutes. But look, I got my Hawkeye coming up. I'll watch that weekly. <laughs> Figure drawing says uh, Brandon Cap, Mike Spite, a spot on. Watch the whole show. It really picks up as it goes along. I'm glad it picks okay. up. Uh, so the other thing we have, speaking of animated shows, we have uh, the Marvel Zombie show. It's animated. Yeah. I, I never was into the Marvel Zombie stuff, but Mike, you're no. the zombie guy. Yeah, because again, you guys don't watch the What don't If show, it. and I if know. you watch the Marvel, <laughs> the Marvel Zombies are in that show, mm -hmm. and they are really well done in there. So obviously, based off of the popularity of that episode. You're going to learn more of it. And I think it's got to do, it might have to deal with a little bit more of like Robert Kirkman's side of things. So I, I, okay. I don't know. Cause I think that's what it's based off of that first original series. Oh, nice. All right. Well, we'll see how that one uh, pans out. We do have two more. Uh, these are the bigger pieces here. Spider-Man freshman year comes out. What's interesting about this is obviously it doesn't seem like it's going to be connected to the Spider-Man we know from the MCU, so is this like going to be a new show? Is it not going to be connected? No matter what, I'm watching it. I just hope it, I hope it's not a kids show because we we never really had. Well, I mean, we had the '90s show, but it's still all those shows are geared to kids. So to have a Spider-Man animated show that is geared for adults, like that's I I'd be very excited for that. I don't I don't think it is. I don't think it's going to be. In my personal that opinion, sucks. I, I, think <laughs> it, I think it's going to be gathered towards um, maybe a wider audience i i think maybe it, it might be not like what you see on a saturday morning cartoon but i think it might be i don't know maybe pg maybe pg third I, I don't know if, if it's oh, i'm definitely don't want it to be like you know a moon night but i do want it to be like <laughs> sophisticated <laughs> stories uh and that's yeah. i just hope it's not so yeah. i want it to be serialized i want it to be like a story that i could follow every week and be like oh cool like this is something i could look forward to like a young justice so i i wouldn't mind yeah. if it was actually like what if right mm -hmm. i mean i know you guys haven't seen it but that was something that was for everybody to watch i think that'd be smart uh because again we've seen all the other spider-man shows do you have an opinion on that brant no, I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I, I wish, I, I would hope that it would be something like somewhere in the middle where you can get something out of it, no matter what age you are, like Young Justice, Batman, the animated series, you know, Justice League, that kind of thing. So, so speaking of Saturday morning cartoons, we have X Men '97 returning, and I, you know, big confession, I don't love X Men '97. I, I. I think it's a little bit too high. I actually like X-Men Evolution more. And I know that's crazy, but I do. I think uh, that's a little bit more your generation. Generation. Exactly. Yeah, right. That, so that was I, the... 92. I said 97. X-Men 92. I uh, see. <laughs> Not even my, yeah. I wasn't even alive for it. But I am curious for this one. The only thing that would make me excited, and I'm sure they're not doing this. I'm sure they're going to continue it from the 97 storylines. Um, I would like it to be like in the animation form of the 92. I don't know why I keep saying 97. Uh, 92. Um, you know, I would like to be like Krakoa. Like things that are like recent stories like in that animation style. Hmm. I, you know, when, when it came out, just real quick, Mike, sorry. Yeah. Um, when it came out, it was, it was, I don't want to say groundbreaking because the animation style definitely wasn't groundbreaking, but for comic fans, you know, it was like something, it was better than anything we got, we had gotten up to that point. You know what I mean? So it was really cool. And that music, that theme song is just like one of the best animated theme songs of all time. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. And it just gets you excited and pumped and you get in there. And like we were just talking about with, uh, with those uh, more mature storylines, I, I think there was a lot of through lines in that series that, you know, could appeal to a lot of different ages, no matter how old you were. Um, there was some serious stuff going on in that show, but it was, you know, with a very colorful, fun, vibrant backdrop. So. And that show tackled a lot of the major storylines in the comic books. Yeah. 
Like it, it cap, you know, it talked about the Phoenix. It talked about days of future past. Like it had all those stories in there. Like that was your, you know, MCU at the time when it came to, you know, X-Men. Um, the one thing that I would like to see is I would like to see like if they mixed the two together. So like Kat was talking about evolution so what's to say they can't put the two together in a way where you put more characters in there? Like who's to say, Hey, let's, let's put Emma Frost in there. Right. You know, why, yeah. why couldn't you do that? Put, put Kitty in there as well. Like you can continue the storyline from the 92 series and then continue it from 97, but add other players in there. Um, and then you can tackle, some of the more current storylines that have been that have come out since then, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be the best route to go. I just hope they don't rely so much on nostalgia because I feel like that's so much of our television these days. It's like, oh, it doesn't hold up. Just because, it is like we miss this show. It um, is, but you know how many people are going to watch that though? There, I oh, mean, there sure. is going to be a ton of people. And yeah. but let's have a reason for the show to exist is my point, I guess. Right. It's just like let's make sure it's not just the same thing that was in ninety two, but was right. you can't duplicate <laughs> that though. I mean, it's yeah. they're only gonna make it better. I mean, they're only, you know, you, the animation's gonna be better. I think it's I think there's certain things that are gonna be it's gonna have that familiar tone, but I think obviously they're gonna improve on the story and hopefully the writing and everything else. And what I want out of this, though, is I want people to get excited about X-Men, right? And let Disney realize that maybe these are the X-Men that we love and we can get proper writers on the X-Men titles again. And, and, you know, think about it. Like, people love those X-Men comics back in the days, and that show was based off of how those X-Men comics were, right? So, yeah. you know. Maybe it'll get the X Men back on track again, at least comic wise. It for sure. By the way, it is called X Men ninety seven. Oh, it, well, yeah. The, the new show is called X Men ninety seven. Right. So, so that's, that's why you keep calling it. That. It's, yeah. it's continuing okay. off of there. It started so it's like five in, years the later. The one yeah. started in ninety two. Right. And it so went in ninety seven. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna get a lot of cable and uh, Deadpool. I have a feeling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, we'll see. All right. I knew I was saying 97 for a reason. I was like, why do I keep saying that? I know I saw that somewhere. But yeah, yeah so that's all the news for this week. Obviously, we had a lot. Um, we actually have a lot of comics to talk about, too. So uh, before we get into it, I know me and Brant um, have Kickstarters. Uh, Brant, if you want to go first with your with your Kickstarter. Yeah. So uh, mine is a, a cyberpunk fantasy comic book called In the Land of the Dragon, issue number one. Um, I'm just going to pull it up here. There we go. All right, so uh, this is about a mercenary named Kinzo who is tasked with kidnapping a child that could uh, that holds a secret that could shift the balance of power between two warring corporations in a sprawling, vibrant metropolis. If you like things like Akira, Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, uh, you know other cyberpunk or anime like that, you're going to love this book. Um, we are, I think 61% funded at this point. We've got some limited edition metal covers available. We got all kinds of stuff. You can check it out. There's some of the art from the, uh, from the book. So you can check all of this out at lastemberpress.com slash dragon. Scroll past the creative team there. It's a lot of us. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, uh, you can check it out. We are live until December 3rd. So just a little over two weeks to go. So, um, we would love your support. Thanks. I like the thanks at the end. <laughs> yeah, thanks. thanks. <laughs> I'm thanking you in advance, right? Uh, well, I have uh, only two more days left for my Kickstarter. It's Slice of Life. Uh, it's about an anime character that comes to life and falls in love with a high school cheerleader. Uh, it ends Thursday at 10 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we only have two more backers until 500. So hopefully, guys, maybe by the end of the night, we could get to 500 backers. Uh, the big goal is to hopefully get to 600 backers by the end of this campaign. Uh, it's done really well. We're really happy about it. Here are some pages. Uh, if you enjoy Slice of Life stories, I think you'll enjoy this because it literally breaks down the genre. It's a romance story. It's an action story. It's a comedy story. There's so many different genres in it uh, with some wonderful art. Uh, so go check it out. 
Nice. All right. So we're on the comic books now. We are. All right. So did you have something to say, Brian? Um, I was just going to say that I didn't actually get to put together my top five, so I'm just going to talk about them as they come. Okay. Okay. All right. So just a heads up, guys, in case you did not read your books, which we hope you have by now, uh, there are spoilers in these comic books, so everything goes here. Um, And the first book that we're going to talk about, let me switch this over, is... Probably one of the biggest books of this week, and this was Venom issue one. So this is a very, uh, you know, what is it? Bigger sized issue um, written by Al Ewing and Ram V. And we have basically we have kind of two different stories going on in a way because you have one story really going to be focusing on Dylan uh, and him, I guess, going to be on Earth being the next Venom. And then you're going to have a story about Eddie, who is basically cosmic venom at this point. But, you know, he's the next he's the king in black. And supposedly it looks like he dies in this issue. And then he goes into some garden and then he comes across some mystical new villain, I guess, by the time you wind up getting to the end of it. And by the time I got done reading the end of this book, I'm like, oh, shit, we're already going Immortal Hulk style on this book. That that's how I felt on it. It was already getting a little bit weird for me, right? So what I like out of this book, honestly, I found myself more interested in the Dylan story. And, me too. Me too. And I think this is a good thing because, in a way, this is going to keep this book grounded, where it's not always going to focus on Eddie, where he's where he's in some other world dealing with some other thing. So, would you would you guys think about this book? Um, I don't know. I'm a little torn by it just because, as you know, I never stick with a Venom book. And I don't know if there's anything where I'm like, whoa, I need to get the next issue of Venom. Uh, I like Dylan's story. I think that was definitely my favorite part. And I, I think I want to try issue two just for that sake. But the other stuff was too much for me. It reminds me why I don't like Marvel events. And I'm sure it's going to tie, in, tie into Timeless somehow. And I was like, man, do I care? I don't know. I, I bet I know. I, I bet one of your panels would have been from this book, though. No. Oh, which one? The I actually Beatles didn't pick reference. my panels this week. I, oh. Yeah, I did screen capture it, but I didn't actually yeah. like set up my top okay. five once we decided we weren't doing panels. I didn't, yeah, I didn't as, look to as, see which ones it were. <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, "That's going to be cat's panels. It's got to be." <laughs> but uh, I definitely yeah. took a picture of it. I yeah. I love my Beatles references. That was really good. The writing was. The dialogue work was good because I, I don't I, again I don't know about the plot I'm 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 curious about it. Yeah, it, it didn't totally so, sell me either. I'm I'm not in the place where I'm gonna drop it or thinking about dropping it yet. But I definitely I agree with you both that I, I like the Dylan story better. Um, the whole Eddie jumping into different bodies and kind of thing is just like okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, yeah, I, I like Dylan's story. I, I like and you know. The chains don't bother me, Mike. I know, <laughs> I know you, you you hate the chains, but uh, it it does it makes sense. He's he's a kid. He's gonna wrap chains around us. I don't know why, but why not, right? So it's just it, weird. It's just it like, weird. hey, let me have some random chains around my wrist. Like, <laughs> like he probably he probably saw Ghost Rider and was like, he looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe you, maybe you read a Spawn comic book or something yeah. like that. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I get it. He's a kid. It's it just weird how he has it. But yeah, I mean, the book was OK. I mean, it wasn't bad. It's just the problem is, it's like it's only the first issue. So yeah. it's like you can't get a lot and they throw a lot of weird stuff at you right from the start. So you, you can't get a real good feel of the book yet. All you do know, you know is that you feel like Dylan is going to be on his own kind of supporting himself is going to be with sleeper and uh, yeah. maybe helping him out as well. And uh, I want to see that journey from him. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little concerned because you guys know how I felt about immortal Hulk. So I'm a little concerned that it's going to get away from me and I'm going to fall off of it, but I'm not there yet. So, right. I hope to like Hulk more. That's my hope is Hulk issue one. I'll, I'll enjoy a little more. Hmm. All right. So yeah. there we go. There's our thoughts on venom. 
So next one is a Robin and Batman issue one. This one was written by Jeff Lemire. And uh, let's see, Brant, you didn't read this book. No, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to like say I'm not, a, I don't, I don't know. It just didn't grab me. I'll just put it like that. I, I um, I really like Jeff Lemire. So I was like, all right, I'm going to pick this up, even though we have 20,000 Batman books. Uh, but I really like this, honestly. Yeah. I felt like it. the story just was so good. And yeah, it's not reinventing the wheel, but the way it's told, you feel for Dick Grayson a lot. Mm -hmm. um, man, and again, it's not, and it's not anything different than what we've seen, but it's just like such a rich, character-driven father-son story. And it, yeah. it was really good. It it was really good. I, I really enjoyed the story. And I really enjoyed alfred's involvement in this book especially since we don't see alfred all that much and um and being that he's kind of the one that's in the middle of everything you know and how how he's dealing with this rift between dick and bruce and how you know dick wants to be robin and he wants to go out on the town and you know, and then he kind of fails and Batman is testing him out. And uh, kind of the cool thing was, too, is that, you know, R Batman had a suit made for him already. But in order to yeah, find that out, suit. yeah, he had to go into his di his diary. And and Dick was like, you went into my stuff and you read my personal stuff. He's like, but it, I was just doing it to make a gift. And he's like, that's not the point. You don't do that, you know. And so like those emotional beats were really well done in this book. And um, the art style was a little bit different. And uh, I, I just thought the story was really well told, you know, pacing was really good. It wasn't bogged down by a lot of dialogue. It just got right to the point. And I had a blast with this book. It was, it was Me phenomenally too. written really, really good. I was going to pass on it too, Brant, because again, another freaking Batman book. How many yeah. books have we read with, robin and batman in the early years and this and that but it, it was just well written okay yeah i agree right. maybe i'll have to check too. it out is it yeah go check it out yeah and it's it's yeah it's short short and sweet i think i think you'll enjoy it it's good absolutely okay. cool all right so i got a couple comments here what does it say <laughs> serenity what does he say about this Chains are metal. Of course he has them. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, uh, you know, it's good if I like a Venom book. I'll be reading it for now. For now. Yeah. And then now. Uh, Daniel Rose is, I haven't read Hulk since issue 36. It completely lost him. So, I think around yeah. that time it did get off the rails a bit. Around issue 36. It, it picked up again. I didn't love the finale finale, but you know, the book as a whole was really good. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So next book we're going to talk about is what's the furthest place from here? Issue this is a one. weird book. Uh, very, so all three of us read this book and yeah. I was kind of like, dude, what am I, what am I reading? Like what's right? going on? There's, there's these kids that live in this record store and then there's like other factions of these these kids like there's pig kids and then there's the music kids and they're like there's no adults it's like the adults like die or something and you really and don't his know. main character seems confused that she's pregnant like yeah, i don't know if i was the only like, one who caught that she's like doesn't know that she is yeah <laughs> I, it, yeah it's like maybe maybe they're not supposed to have be able to have kids they didn't really make that clear why that was no like that was so deal. weird yeah it's just like oh and i don't know like there's like it's like wait does she not know this like this pregnancy not exist like what is going on um but w what i was gonna say is like the thing that being it being it so weird is what i liked about it but it's also what i hated about it like i don't know mm. what to think about this book because like this is maybe <laughs> weird but i also like that it's so different yeah, yeah. and it, I mean, also, I mean, the art style is very different, too. So it's like I, I can't decide if the art style matches the story <laughs> for me yet. So it's, it's really a really strange combination. This is just one you're going to have to pick up again to see if you truly like yeah. it, because you need to see yeah. what, what this world is about, how it possibly got this way. Where did the pregnant girl go? Like, yeah, there's obviously there was this map. Right. And it, yeah. I guess it took it to 
a city. Uh, and I think that's maybe where she's trying to go. Uh, and the dude like leaves her up there overnight. <laughs> it's just so weird, man. I, it was and, so weird. And then the creepy, the tall slender man, like looking women that come in, the, just can like go through their locked door. And that was weird. The strangers, I think they called them. Whatever. That was weird too. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. I know this book like was pretty hot this week too. Like it was sold out everywhere. And I, I don't get the appeal to it, like why it was, because for me, I just thought it was a very confusing book. I'm not saying it was poorly written. I, I'm just saying that it was just, it just doesn't give you enough to give you a justification, really what everything is about. And again, my biggest problem is, and I'll always say this because this is what bugs me in comics is when, or in movies in general, is just when you throw so much at a reader and I just felt like there was a lot of characters in this book and it was hard to get to know any of these characters. The only person that you got to know really was the pregnant girl, and I, but I still don't remember her name. And then the dude that supposedly died, but didn't die. That and came is in. Is he the father? The is he not? I was is he so the, an adult? And if you're an adult, yeah. are you supposed to die? Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 would... I agree that you need an issue too. I'm like, all yeah. right, I might give an issue too, depending on like how much I'm reading that week. But what were you going to say, Brent? I was going to say, I, I, I would assume the buzz is because it's the four kids walk into a bank yeah. team, right? And that was a mm -hmm. big book, right? So, um, and it's a known writer, you know, you probably got a following, but yeah, no, it's just, it's odd. It's just an odd book. And I, I like you guys, I, it's like, I can't tell if I like it or not. I'm yeah. so confused by it. No. All right. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. So let's move on to our number five then. Um, what was my number five? So um, my number five is a righteous thirst for vengeance issue one or issue two. Sorry. We're on issue two on that. So this is the book that's written by Rick Remender. And this book is almost basically a silent series. There's very little dialogue in this book. Um, and it's about a character that went into in the first issue. It's like you don't very know very much about this character. He went into a person's house. You think that maybe he was a shopper for him. And he come across this murder that happened in his house. And then he goes and he escapes. And earlier in the day in the grocery store, he saw this particular person who bought these things that could have killed this person. So you're like, oh. Oh shit. So he thinks he knows who killed this, these people. Right. So he like flees or whatever it is. And this, and this is weird because now he goes back to his house and he has this secret hiding place, this guy and, uh, behind this hiding place, he's got this secret computer with this USB and he opens it up and, and, and he finds out that he's, there's these jobs for hire on the internet or whatever that can, that you can take out people. And it looks like he's part of this group and maybe he went to the, to the house to kill these people and someone already killed them in front of them. I don't know, but he took this next job and uh, it looks like it's a team up job because he wound up meeting up with one of these guys and they're going to kill this woman. So it's like you find out that this guy is like some kind of hitman or whatever it is. I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to decipher what's going on just because there's very little dialogue. Like, where does this organization come from? Why does this guy do this? Like, who is the other guy that he teams up with? Oh, like, what's the motive behind everything? Why does this book exist? You know, it's just it's kind of weird, you know, but it, it does definitely have me intrigued. The artwork is really good in it. I don't know. I'll, I'll check out issues three and see what it has to has to have to offer. You know. Yeah, I, I read the first issue of this, and because of a lot of the reasons you said, I just did not follow up on it. There wasn't a whole lot that happened. There wasn't a lot of dialogue. There wasn't a lot of information given to me. Um, the only thing there was him finding them dead. And it was like, okay, that's just not enough to bring me back personally. Right. It's like from what you're describing from this issue too, it's like these two issues together are like the first five minutes of a movie. <laughs> you know? yeah, and that's, exactly. that's like super decompressed. Uh, Absolutely. But yeah. I mean, for him to have a secret computer in his house to go look for another job, because this one, 
maybe got botched or was already taken, it makes you realize that, oh, this guy's like a hitman and he yeah. just takes random jobs. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, uh, when you're a grocery delivery person, you know, and you're like, oh, look, John Smith has a, has an order, you know, that she wants. So I'm going to click on it. And that's what they do to take out, you know, to, to yeah. kill these people. So that's wow. what it seems like to me anyway. Yeah. So we'll see. So that was my number five. So Kat, what was yours? Mine was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue, whatever up to issue 13. Um, 13 I think. This is a solid setup issue. It's very much a setup issue where they realize that the Power Rangers that are kind of been a, against each other realize, okay, we're, we're going to have to fight together if we want to save Zordon. Um, and then you have Billy trying to save Zordon on his own as well. So yeah, it was all very setup y, but a good, you know, pretty solid setup. Yeah, I, I mean, this is, as we keep talking about, this is the stronger of the two series, um, mm -hmm. but it's starting to bleed into the to the other one, talking about the other, the Imperials and the Omega Rangers and all that stuff. Um, but I've enjoyed this this storyline with Zordon's people coming and invading the Earth and, the you know, the revelation behind who Zed is and all this stuff. Uh, it's been really interesting so far. And, and now that we're at this point where Zordon is gone for the moment, um, and they're having to to rally together underneath uh, that lady. I can't remember her name, but the the scientist Grace. That puts yeah Grace yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's really interesting, and uh, it's going to be like, can they work together? You know, can they work with uh, with the Green Ranger? And and you know what what's going to happen? Can I, I don't know. I, I'm just invested. I'm invested in this whole. Altarian War, is that what it's called? I think that's so. how you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> All right. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. We really appreciate the comments and the questions as well. Um, and then we also have a interesting comment here by Serenity. And he says, well, since the lead guy looks like Benedict Wong, the guy who's playing Wong in Doc Strange, I'm sure... This is a movie script in disguise as a comic. Huh. Aren't they all these days? <laughs> right. And then he had a good theory on this one. My theory, he's not a hitman because he was too nervous. Because if he, when he found the guy that he was working with, he did look extremely nervous. Like he was sweating mm -hmm. and everything. And so he goes, I think he found the USB that went into the computer to find, you know, to find all those jobs. And is going there to stop the murder of that woman. So this, that's definitely interesting. So maybe he was too late with the first one. Maybe he was going to stop her. Maybe maybe that's where he found the USB. Who knows? I don't know where he found the USB. That, yeah. that is my thing right there. So right. I, don't, I don't know. All right. So that was our number five. So so let's talk about the Joker issue nine. What did you guys think about this particular issue? better i feel like finally yeah i thought this was back on the map for me because like you yeah. have obviously you don't know if jim's gonna die or not and that's a big possibility that he's gonna die and then the connections to the gordon family finding out mm. that the um talon has possibly been jim gordon jr this whole time so i thought this issue really picked up yeah 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 and then you know the the master plan behind the network and, and the slabs of meat and all that kind of stuff. That it was, was crazy. Yeah. I was the like, jokers, oh God. all the extra jokers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it's like, Oh, I wonder if this is how three jokers came to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. thinking too. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah. And just like some great inner monologue from Jim this time too. It's like, as they're driving up and he's talking about, you know, I really, I really should call Barbara. I should really come bring Batman in here, but Batman will, you know, not let him die. And I, you know, I can't have that. So it's like, okay, Jim's still breaking bad and going dark here. So he's paying for I it. Am, uh, you know, I made this prediction though, in the beginning of the series, like what if Gordon does die? Yeah. Right. It's possible for sure. Right. And this would be crazy, though, because then you got Alfred that's dead and Commissioner Gordon that's dead like that. That shit's weird. Yeah. And Bane is a zombie right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just breaking down the whole Bat family. Yeah. Continuing Ooh. to. We talked about Jace Batman going to New York. We talked about that earlier. And I said that 
that Batman is the Miles Morales of of Batman. So that's mm-hmm. that's what I said. That's what they're going for, I think, in in this DC world. Yeah. So, all right. I I like the Joker. I thought it was good too. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the normal artist on there. Um, it was a different artist this time around, but I thought the story was really solid, and I did not see the whole talent situation coming at all. So that right. that was a great plot point there. All right. So then let's talk about let's talk about the thing issue one. Uh, Brand, you didn't read the thing. I did not. I didn't like the art. So I just yeah. you know, it's okay uh, that you didn't. It's totally fine. <laughs> <I wasn't, laughs> There's nothing much I, that happens. <laughs> I get I get what they were trying to kind of do with that artwork. They're trying to make it a little bit old school. Old you school. know, yeah. yeah. My problem with this book is it was very depressing, and I did not feel that this fit really the thing. Um I wanted him to be a ha- more happy go lucky character in this book. But my biggest issue in this book is that Alicia and Ben's relationship is super strong, right? They're engaged to be married in this issue. And there's one instance that happens because Ben Grimm is jealous of Alicia hanging out with this guy as they go to see this, this show. And then all of a sudden out of randomness, this dude like maces him. And he gets mad because he gets maced and tosses a car and he takes her away and she goes, Ben. And then literally the next panel later, she's like, you know what? I'm not going to marry you. Like that would never happen. And then Ben yeah. lets her go. Like, why, why would that even happen? And his line is that I don't give up on things that, yeah. that he says that in this book and he gives up on Alicia almost immediately in this book and starts to pursue another relationship. Yeah, so like right away. Issue in this in this book. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that I also don't know if there is I don't know if there was much of a purpose for this book either. Like at least with Invisible Woman, yeah, it wasn't really connected to like the bigger plot, but like you could tell, like, oh, this is a, like you could kind of fit it in as a side story. Like, okay, I can see where this could work. Even Fantastic Four life story, you know, like they could do whatever they want. So that's the point of that book. This is just like it's a lost story, but like why, again, why does it matter? Right? And besides, yeah. like we're seeing a thing book that where he's at a character, not like Mike said, he's not the the comedic character we know and love. So um yeah it just it didn't hold me enough for an issue two i don't think it was a horrible book by any means it just you know i I don't know if it needed to be on the slate yeah yeah oh and then i forgot to mention the wannabe kindred character that was in this book as well the villain that was oh yeah he's a he's a hooded character he's got these crazy teeth he's got these eyes the dude looks like kindred and he like I don't know, like sucks your heart out or something like that. I, who knows? Who knows? And then he's after the female that the thing is like falling in love with or is dating or whatever. And then the, the there's this new enemy, I guess, that's in this book who wraps tires around his hands. I like <laughs> this, this book was not to me. This book was not good. Yeah. I know some people liked it, but I, I the more I think about this book and the more I talk about it, the more the more and more I just dislike it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't think I'm buying issue two with this one. This is not, I wanted to see clobbering time and that's yeah. not what we got. Right. At all. So it looks like I saw Daniel Rose made a, um, a comment on here and he said that, uh, I saw this on Mike's after the pool video and I, he saved me three bucks. Yeah. So that's, that, I'm, I'm glad I saved you three bucks. That's my job, man. You're making make decisions on what comic books to buy. And I saved you that money. So good. I'm glad your store only sells it for three bucks because mine's five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're having a discount because of, of, of it. I don't know. I'm disappointed in that. I think a lot of people were kind of like you, Kat. They just did not see that story on where it was going, you know? Yeah. All right, so let's move on to number four. Cat, what was your number four? 
I was static shock, actually. Um, oh. Yeah, I've been having a fun time with this one. This one we get to see, you know, everyone knows that he's static, which I actually make what I, I think it makes him for a more fun book. And then you get to see the friends are kind of helping out, the Frida and, and um, Gears character, Richie. Uh, so we, we get to see them as heroes a little bit. We get to see some of the Bang Baby villains fight him. So it's just uh, pure fun. You know, if you like the cartoon, uh, it definitely has vibes of that has this kind of own new feel to it, but also, you know, it's a little darker like the comics uh, or the previous comics. So, um, yeah, having a good time with it. Cool. I didn't get to finish this one. I only read like the first seven or eight pages. So I, I liked what I read so far, but yeah. Uh, it, ends, it ends on a good note. Like I said, the friends cool. do get involved, so it's yeah. cool to see them. I, I did flip through and see like his sister giving him the jacket and talking about that. So yeah. That cool. yeah. yeah that, she had a good moment here too. All right. And uh, my number four was the book we just talked about, which was The Joker. So pretty easy there. All right. And uh, let's talk about The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 78. Morbius. Morbius. <laughs> Did Morbius not like with seeing him. Morbius, armless Morbius, nippleless <laughs> Morbius. <laughs> uh, and also, like you know, I really like Sarah Percelli as an artist, but I don't, I don't think yeah. this is her strongest work. No, um, I really did not like seeing Morbius here. It's just like, oh, just because we're getting a movie, that's why we have it. The only scene I really liked was the MJ and Black Cat scene. I'm like, oh, I'm excited for that. I th the only other thing about the Morbius thing that I, that I liked was the the lady behind Beyond contemplating whether they should just let him keep the the vampire toxin or whatever. I, I thought that was a strong moment as to her motivations behind this whole thing and, and yeah, where this a, could go. She's yeah. a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's yeah. Basically what she is. Cause she doesn't care. She doesn't care right. about him. You know, all right. she cares about is her agenda in, in the whole thing, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool because she becomes a, maybe she's the next queen goblin. Or maybe Goblin Queen, whatever. That, that's, that can make sense. Yeah, that I don't know if that's potions. exciting, but it, it no. makes sense for sure. Right. It's going to be his girlfriend. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe it is his girlfriend. Maybe <laughs> she gets jealous of him yeah. or for some for some reason, right? I'm like, know. I'm going to yeah. become a goblin. But yeah. I agree with Kat. Like, I love the Black Cat MJ scene. I thought that yeah. scene was really great. And then the rest of the book was just. If you just if I just read those two pages, I would have been fine. Like yeah, the, the I, rest I, of the, the 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 scene with Morbius with him biting Peter at the end of it, like there was really nothing out of it. Oh, I'm just like I'm just like stumbling around and nothing really happens to him. He and he transports out of that thing, and that's what cuts Morbius like in half or whatever. Yeah, you know. I I like um I like that line in the. Black Cat Mary Jane scene. I, I like that line where she's like, how many more ex love interests do I have to get in here? I, I don't care. Just <laughs> if you'll wake up. Yeah. yeah. I like that MJ wasn't jealous because she's so confident right. of her relationship with Peter. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Come in. Like, but I think she realizes right he needs all the people in her, in his life right now to help yeah. him get through this. So right. that was really cool of her. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but that Spider-Man issue was bad. Like that whole fight with Morbius, like that was pointless. Like really, oh, really yeah. pointless. Didn't like so. it. All right. So that's Spider-Man. Hopefully next issue will be better. We'll see what happens. I'm just waiting for that annual, whatever that MJ Black Cat team up is. Like that's the one I'm mm. waiting oh, for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the Black Widow one. Is it when when's it come out? Is it a one shot as an annual as an actual issue? Well, I don't shot. remember. It's yeah, okay. It's a one shot. Yeah. Okay. Uh all right. So we talked about Mighty Morphin. So we're gonna go on to number three. Um, I saw the next book we're gonna be talking about in a minute. Uh number three for me was Venom. Uh we already talked about that book. Kat, what was yours? Mine was Joker. We already talked about it. Okay. So let's talk about the the book that burns me once again. Oh no. Freaking Miles Morales issue 32. Mm. That's what Brant thinks of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was waiting to see why it burned you. <laughs> okay. So the fight 
and the purpose of this book was horrible. You know, <laughs> I I made this this comment when I did my after the pool episode. You have books that are fillers, right? Or one and dones or two issue story arcs. And we got a lot of this in the 70s and the 80s and in the early 90s, right? But the difference is, is those stories were rich in dialogue. Those stories had really good purposes to them, right? And they were fun to read. And then you got your next, like, say, major story arc. This didn't have shit. This had complete laziness. This book, you didn't read this, Kat, did you? No, but I'm having no, a fun okay. time. You ranting about it. So you got, <laughs> you got Taskmaster, right? Last issue was actually pretty good. He captures her. And then you're wondering, dude, why is he going to capture her, right? Uh, what's the motive behind this? What's going to be the outcome? How is the fight going to be? You got none of that shit. So – what happens is Miles somehow gets on a freaking boat that's like half a mile off into the ocean already by using his Venom Blast. They do a two-second fight, and Taskmaster sits there and goes, you're stalling me from delivering the package because if I don't deliver this in a certain time, the it's, it's null and void, and I don't get paid for this. So they start battling. How does this stall anything? Because the ship is on its way to the destination. I have no freaking idea. So they go and they fight, and all of a sudden, Taskmaster has this fucking alarm that's on his little watch, and he goes, well, that's my alarm. Well, sorry, kids. This is, like, all null and void, so screw you guys. I'm flying out of here. That's it. Next thing you see is the Beyond Corporation limo shows up, comes out, says, you can't be Spider-Man anymore. Here's the contract. you got to give that up or whatever it is. You want to talk about lazy writing. There's no motive here for his little girlfriend to get captured. There's no reasoning. You don't know who wanted to capture her. And... The fight just ends because his alarm goes off and he just takes off and goes away. That is bad. I am sorry that there is no point into that book whatsoever. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. So I, ha I hadn't actually thought about the boat was still moving. <laughs> That's <hilarious. laughs> and, and also, if you're trying to get to somewhere in a, in a record time or whatever, why would you be on like an old barge? Yeah. Cause that's what they're, they're like on a garbage barge, just like floating through. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, wasn't the great ending and, and that very abrupt, you know, you know, contracts up. Sorry. Um, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to this issue. I agree. And I was a little disappointed as well. He's like bleeding out in the middle of, of New York or whatever it is. And all of a sudden the paramedics find him and they're like, Spider-Man, let me help you. And he's like, no, no, let me help you. So he's in the ambulance, right? And all they did was bandage him up. He calls Riri Williams to find out the location of Taskmaster. Literally, yeah. the guy, five minutes later, he's back out doing whatever it is that he needed to do. It, yeah. This issue was really, really poorly written, in my opinion. And and there wasn't very much dialogue ish either. And I, 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 I don't know. I can't see. I'd like to know why two EMTs are just kind of chilling, hanging out beside the ambulance. They're just like, oh, there's a superhero in trouble. Let's go help them. Oh, it's it so bad. Is it just it doesn't me seem like I'm missing much. About. Yeah. <laughs> it is, honestly. Especially, I have no context about this issue, so it was very fun. Oh, it's so it's, just, it's, it's kind of sad because last issue was really good. It was. It, it's set up to be a really solid book now if it ended in a different way where it was like i gotta deliver this to so and so right that would make a big difference if they had a major fight instead of like a two panel fight that would make a difference uh if his if if he wasn't on a boat it would make a much better difference but <laughs> The fight that they had in the last issue was like two seconds long. And didn't he take her in a fucking helicopter? Didn't yeah. he take her in a helicopter? Yeah. So 
what's wrong with the helicopter? Why do you got transfer from a helicopter to a boat? That doesn't make any sense. I know. Maybe he thought Spider-Man couldn't reach the boat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make uh, any sense. There's so yeah. many bad things that happened in this book. It's so bad. It's so bad. I get burned on this book every time, and I give it yeah. so many chances. Even if they had, like Miles Morales, he's a good yeah. character. Even if they had thrown in a panel at the end, like the person that had hired Taskmaster saying, you know, like some nefarious, you know, to give you something to hang for the future, like as to why this was even a story. Yeah. But yeah, you don't Total get any of that. Total throwaway. Total yeah. throwaway. I'm done. <laughs> Next. Where are we at? They grow uh, number... So we talked about static. We yeah. talked about yeah. static. Okay. So number two. All right. So number two. Kat, what was your number two? Mine was May's book issue three. Um, another really good issue <coughs> where we get to see, you know, him maybe debating, okay, is my daughter actually alive and actually meets a person in his building that like believes him. And I really love the scene between those two. And it's like, okay, I'm back on track. Let's figure out where this world is. And he does by the end of the issue. And I feel like uh, Jeff Lemire's art, works perfectly for this you know i don't mm -hmm. think it's for everything but it really works really well here and uh um yeah it's just a really good book i'm i'm very curious to see how it's gonna go i like this too um i really liked how the, the relationship with the neighbor went in this issue it, like he just needed a friend you know what i'm saying and this is a guy that's just kind of down on everything and she was just there to listen to him and the interesting aspect of this story was her dog went missing and mm. he goes into this maze. And by the time you go, he finds like the secret way to get to the other side of this maze. And it looks like it's this other dimension, you know, and you see the dog and the dog's like, well, it's about time he showed up here. And you're like, whoa, you know. However, well, what if this is another one of those books where it's just like in this guy's head? You know? I wouldn't mind that either. I think either yeah. way, it's going to be a strong book uh, just Absolutely. because it is a book about grief. And I think they've done a really good job at showcasing those emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it would be really sad if it was, though, like if it, if this was in this guy's head and he's wishing for his daughter to come back and. You know, and I think it's more poignant though, because I think there's always comics where things are so fantastical right. that you always get the happy ending. I think it's yeah. a stronger ending if it is fake and it, no, you know, yeah. it is just this human story. You, about you, you do make a good point. I, yeah. I made that point, and I, uh, when we we're me and Brant were talking last week about um, the me you love in the dark, how, mm -hmm. how I said that that book is more, it, it could be. Uh, the ghost is a manifestation in Rose head and it's very not true. Actually anybody that's living in there. Uh, yeah. And she's just been isolated in this house and it kind of reminds you of the shining and she's basically talking with herself. And this is her that's going to cause this problem with her, you know, her agent or who her supporter of her art that finally came to the house. And I, I think it, it's a strong possibility in my head that that's, there's no ghost at all. It's all her. Yeah, no, that issue was really interesting. I didn't get to talk about it, but I really, yeah. what I thought of it, it was just like a an allegory about an abusive relationship, which is interesting mm. that you wouldn't have expected that from the last issue. Like this book keeps changing what it actually is, which I, I genuinely really enjoy about it. Like I don't really know what this book's about. Right. But it, it does kind of make sense because you know, we kind of talked about it last week because now that he's, you know, had her or been with her, Rather, mm -hmm. it's a better way to put it. Um, there's that possessive nature. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it's a very interesting abusive. book. Yeah. And yeah, I think there's only one more issue left of it. Yeah. So yeah. We'll hopefully get some answers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So May's book is a phenomenal, phenomenal book. All right. So let's see. So my number two then was uh, Robin and Batman. So... We talked about that. That's how much I like that book. I really liked it. Yeah, All right. Good. And then uh, next, uh, I have actually dropped off of this book because I fell behind during the summer. But we got uh, Stillwater issue 11. 
Um, I'll go quick because I think I didn't I didn't notice I was the only one who marked it down. Uh, May oh no, Brant also no, marked it down. It. Never mind, yeah. sorry. I don't know why I was going crazy. Um, but yeah, no, this issue was uh, a little, it was definitely more of a, I hate saying a setup issue, but it was, it was like a year has passed and we're seeing like how the government and pol- politics have changed here. But I really like the mom. That was a really good cliffhanger. Like, oh, what's going to happen here? Yeah. So the year later and it, it's like new people are in charge, but it's, they're learning. It's the same old story. It's the same thing, mm-hmm. you know? And they're still battling with the same issues. And, and that guy that, you know, started off the whole series is still stuck there and can't leave. But yeah, the cliffhanger with his mom showing up um, at the end was that that made the issue for me, I guess. Because I agree with you up to that point. It was set up for this new phase of this series. So not a whole lot else happened, really. No. Just like there was the thing about the guy, the stranger from out of town delivering the stuff. And they're like trying to decide how to take care of him because he's starting to get suspicious, but yeah. All right, cool. All right, next book is Strange Academy, issue 13. So um, interesting book here as we get to see Emily visit the person that's in that dungeon. I think that was that we that showed us a long time ago in this series and she finally revisits this guy and figures out like what his deal is and uh kind of sets him free in a way uh i thought that was an interesting take i if i'm not mistaken that's the guy from that arc um i don't even know if it was this book or if it was dr strange where they were trying to get rid of all magic it was it was that storyline and i I, think that's yeah you're right i think you're right because i think it even referenced that in the comic yeah, so it was like a long callback, which was cool. You know, I, I enjoy that part. But um, like we keep talking about with this series, though, this was yet another issue of them going out <laughs> and just doing something, and you learn a little bit about one of the characters. So right. it's, it's a little formulaic. I like that they're putting that kind of stuff with uh, with Emily in the background mm-hmm. and, you know, giving you little little things to hold on to. But that was just like a – a little one off because now he's, you know, we're not going back to him. Now he's in this like heavenly place in his mind. Right. Right. So and, and that's what this book is. So I, I'm, I'm, I said like how old school Marvel was when it came to, you know, storytelling one shots, one and done. That's what this reminds me of because yeah, that's what a lot of these issues are like one or two issue story arcs. And then it moves on to something else. Right. And, and they're good. They're good issues. Oh yeah, they're good. Yeah, <laughs> I just like like you. I, I still want something bigger from it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Every yeah. once in a while, you want something a little bit deeper. You know, you don't want every issue to be a one and done, right? Right. Yeah. But I still like. I mean, they, I like the fact that they are giving each character time to to grow and build, build them throughout each of these issues. So you're learning a little bit more about each one of them as it goes. So. Right. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to use our, uh, this time <clears throat> talk about our number one and my number one was May's book. So, so my m- number one and number two books were both Jeff Lemire books this week. My number one was Robin and Batman. So <laughs> we just switched. <laughs> and it also That's was funny. Jeff Lemire books. <laughs> Super cool. All right. So now we will move on and talk about uh, books that are on our chopping blocks, possibly uh, Venom for You, Cat, right? Yeah, that one's half chop. We'll see what what I'm getting that week when Venom issue two comes out. Um, and then the thing I'm definitely dropping. And then the the long, whatever it's called, the home. Uh, what's the furthest place from home yeah. is a half chop. Because I kind of want to see the second issue, but there's a lot of issues coming out. I don't know how desperate I am for a second issue. Yeah, I'm dropping the thing and then uh, we'll see what happens with the what's the furthest place from here. That's what it's called. Um, I'm checking that out. And then the other book that I'm, I'm I don't know if they're making another one of this, but uh, this this Phenom X book, hmm. uh, th- this this book was bad. Was it? Bad? Yeah. <laughs> it's a John Leguizamo book, right? Yeah. 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 And I. I bought it because I wanted to support him. I'm a fan of him. Yeah, um, he's a good actor. Yeah, and there's multiple writers on it, so I, you know, 
but it just wasn't my thing. There was just way too much dialogue. It was just kind of cringy in certain places and mm. it's just not not for me. It just seemed like a Luke Cage ripoff character, you know? Ah. So uh but it is what it is. I got a cool Todd McFarlane cover. That's who did that cover on there. So you know, nice. tried it out, supported his, you know, that was the dude's dream. So how can I yeah. deny him of that? You know, so I wanted to get that. So that's awesome. Cool. So uh <laughs> Daniel goes, Miles Morales, Mike, you're not dropping it. You, you know what? I it it's connected to the beyond story. Beyond. <laughs> So I have to read it again. I have to read it because it's connected to that whole thing. So I have to find out what goes on now, right? Oh, man, it's so bad. There's always a reason why for me to buy this book. Always. God. All right. So Cat's not like, going to buy it. <laughs> what's that? No. Like, Cat's no, not going to buy it. I'll buy it if like, Spider-Man shows up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying it anytime soon. Um. So now we're going to pass it on to you, Brant, for the most anticipated. Yep. So most anticipated. We got a lot of books to talk about this time, actually. Um, a, lot of, a lot of bigger books coming out uh, this week. Let's start with uh, the latest Darkhold, Darkhold Wasp, number one. This looked interesting. I have not read any of the Darkhold books, but I feel like we haven't seen a lot from Janet. And this looks like yeah. a dark book from her. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll pick it up. Okay. So... First of all, uh, I'm one in one with this dark. Actually, if you want to count the main title, one in two. <laughs> That's uh, true. The, the main title was horrible. Yeah. The first issue with the one with Iron Man was great. The issue with Blade, not great. So I like the Blade one. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I like the Blade one. Did actually. you? I didn't. Yeah, like I did. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Oh, okay. That's good. So I guess it's going to depend on the character. So if you're a fan of Janet, you might actually like this one. I do I'm like Janet. On so I'm, I'm hoping. Buy it. I'll let you know uh, if I like it or not. I'll definitely read it by tomorrow. I'll try and make it one of my first ones. But I feel like you'll probably get your books before I get to read it. But we'll see. Right, right. Okay. And then uh, Mike and I are enjoying Moon Knight. Last issue you said was the best issue so far. So Absolutely. hopefully this one uh, supersedes that. Tigra is yeah. what's awesome in that book. She was. So yeah. hopefully she stays in that book because I think she would make a perfect supporting character for him in there. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. And I think he needs that. And I, I like Tiger as a character anyway. So me too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got, uh, let's see. Radio Apocalypse. Mike, you marked that one. It's just another apocalypse book. It's like there's no more weight. There's no more like radio on the air from what I heard, from what I remember reading about it. Oh, wow. That's a serious apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think there's. We all one. use the radio every day. What's that? <laughs> I said, we, we, we use the radio every day. I mean, yeah, I mean well, I mean, they do in like, it. they do in the apocalypse, like yeah. walking dead. Yeah. They're like all those CD true. radio. Yeah. So I don't know. I might want to check it out. You never know. You know, this, hmm. this latest, you know, I don't know where we are, future, whatever that thing we just read. That was apocalyptic book, and um, I, w I was kind of disappointed when they like, I don't know. So we'll see how this uh, radio one goes, you know. Yeah. All these long titles these days. <laughs> you can't remember. The reason they do it is because they want to be the number one search on Google. So they, yeah. they, that's the reason why they keep having these really long titles, but they are so hard to memorize. Yeah. <laughs> like one thing, like Slice of Life. You know, love the title, love it. But having Slice uh, yeah. of Life as your title makes it very difficult to search your own book. Sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I, I can see like if these, you know, hit, become a hit, they're going to be shortened. So people will just start calling this furthest place, you know, or whatever. Uh, it's like two guys, two guys, a girl in a pizza parlor, whatever that show yeah. was. It was just called Two Guys. Exactly. It's yeah. like uh, something is killing the children. Like that's a long title. But yeah. it's a title that is easy That's to remember. That's memorable, though. though. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, my What's God. The, a nice house on the lake. Called? Something is killing the children. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. I feel like but, James Tynion has been better at the longer titles. I feel like he's been a champion of them. Yeah. yeah the nice like, house on the lake. But what's the furthest place from here is just so 
wordy. It's just like a yeah, it's wordy and it's just like this random phrase. You know, it's like, what's the furthest place from here, Google? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, refrigerator full of heads number two. You guys are enjoying that one. Loved issue one. Uh, you have a shark that has his head uh, cut off and he's still growling. So it was yeah. a good issue. I'm excited. Yeah, it was nice. pretty good. And I can't wait to see, like, learn more history about these new weapons that are involved as well, too. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, pizza place, not parlor. You're right, Serenity. I, I couldn't remember what they it was. long called. titles. Yeah, it's just two guys. That's how I know it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I never actually watched the show, but that's uh, let's talk about, I lost my place. Aquaman, the becoming number three. I actually did never got around to reading issue two. So issue two is good. I liked it. it. And supposedly something big happens at the end of this issue. So okay. I don't know what happens, but I'm, I've been liking this series. I think it's been pretty solid. Yeah. I really liked issue one. So I'll, I'll have to catch up uh, this week on that one. And then we got another uh, Batman Secret Files, The Gardener, this time. And and the only reason I'm, I'm interested in this just because we don't know anything about this character. Right? Man, I was there. debating. I, I agree as well. I, the only reason I'm getting it is because of Poison Ivy. So I'm like, yeah. well, I do want to kind of know what their college days are like. So right. I'm like, all right, I'll pick it up because of that. But I agree. Like in a normal circumstance, I've been burned by these books. So I'm like, oh, it's like should I'm I get it? I'm not wasting money. I, I bought that Clown Hunter one. Yeah. And I was just like, uh, I think the only good one was the Huntress one, right? Yeah, the Huntress, Huntress one was good. Yeah. That one Miracle was Molly, I did not like. Book. Yeah, I, this is. I was I, in the middle of that. With that. I don't care enough about the gardener. She did not make mm -hmm. enough of an impact in the main series for me to go out of my way and read about her. Yeah, it, yeah no, it's that's just, understandable. Yeah, like like Kat, the the connection to Poison Ivy is the only reason I'm I'm interested. In you know, in her history, but you know, may look at it and it's like nothing about that. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. Spider woman, number 17. So that ended issue. on a really yeah. good cliffhanger, right? right. Yeah, with the, yeah. But I think this is a new arc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. New story arc starts this time around. So. What was the cliffhanger? I don't remember. Um, the brother, disappeared i don't know if he died i forget but then the niece was like oh, i'm gonna go on and do my own thing and they like teamed yeah. up so that was the that was the ending of that so the brother was okay. gone was the big point even though he's always gone, okay but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. her family always disappears just to resurface so i think the uh, babysitter is going to be maybe she's on the cover so i think maybe she's oh, going to cool. be in the book a lot more oh yeah. okay yeah i like her yeah she's cool and uh, sticking with uh, the spider characters, we got Amazing Spider-Man. We're back with the point issues. 78 point B-E-Y for Beyond. I don't know love if it. I care about this one because you have like Misty Knight and Colleen, who I love as characters, but they yeah, haven't absolutely. made an impression in this book yet. So I don't know. I thought their dialogue was a little better in this in this week's issue. Um, you know, Colleen was throwing in little, little jabs and like the dry humor kind of thing. So I, I enjoyed that at least. But yeah, I, I don't know. There's a hint of a villain coming in, a new villain mm. or something like that in this issue. Uh, there was a reason why I, I was picking this one up. I don't exactly remember why. Yeah. I'm actually going to look it up real quick. You can go on okay. the next book. I, it's it's piquing my interest why. Because I was debating on if I should get it or not. Yeah. So we, we finally have the long-awaited Robins number one. Um, this was the, the tournament that decided this one, right? I'm so. excited for Stephanie Brown. That's all I have to say. Um, I'm, we have I'm so many, we have, yeah, I have to get it. I'll, yeah. I'll finish yeah. that. It's Stephanie. I'm, I'm not ex too excited about it because we've had a Robbins book before, and this was the book that was in the tournament that was hacked to begin with. This, this book was probably always – slated to come out it was already done they they <laughs> called it a round robin tournament to begin yeah. with when it's not <laughs> a round true. robin tournament because they didn't true they didn't play each other multiple times for victories because that's what a round robin is i mean you're talking to a tennis guy that runs yeah. tournaments every day and knows what round robin is right they had an elimination yeah. bracket that's what it was yeah yeah round robin's uh multiple multiple chances like 
you just shift to a, a lower bracket, right? And you yeah, try to yeah. fight or, your yeah. way back you, into it, basically. Or you yeah. play multiple people, and then yeah. whoever, say, loses twice or loses three times is eliminated from yeah. from the tournament, right? Gotcha. So, yeah, that, that was bullshit. I, I still think that thing was all hacked. That's my opinion there. But I'll check out the series, though. I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I think Tim Seeley's a great writer. I just... I just uh, wish that some of these other books had the opportunity to come out there. Uh, Serenity does have a question. Uh, wait, there's another Robins issue one? I'm confused. They have a book now called Robins. Issue two came out this week. So digitally, it's ahead from what I could tell. Yeah. Like digitally, they've already right. released it, two issues. And then like physically, it's finally coming out this week. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was confused by that at first, too, because I, I was seeing that pop up, the Robins too. But yeah, um, physical tomorrow. Oh, we Real just got quick. a... Um, oh, we got a super yeah, chat. So super go ahead chat. and take yeah, that yeah. One last thing about the show. I hope it doesn't botch the Doc X arc because it's vital for teens to know about issues like um, compulsory hetero behavior and being outed. Also, the scenes with Nakia and Zoe still make me cry. Look, you're, you're preaching to the choir. I hope Zoe plays a, a really big role um, in this book or in the show. I hope show, so, yeah. too. I hope all those yeah. supporting characters do because in that in that uh book those supporting characters really made that first volume especially right i mean miss yeah. marvel would not be miss marvel without those people in her life so yeah no for sure yeah i love all those characters they're integral to be in that show it, they need to be in that show and written the right way too i think they'll that, do it well i really do that said i the doc doc x thing i hated that arc <laughs> So I I liked it for Zoe. I didn't for like Zoe, it as a yes. character. I liked <laughs> yeah. Zoe as it like what happened I, to her really interests me. Right. I liked the character stuff around it, but I hated that villain and I hated that 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 story. So mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, going back to um, Spider Man, the reason why Jed McKay is writing this issue, Brant. Ah, ah. Yeah. okay, that okay. makes. Okay makes sense now and then uh spider-man's tough new trainers which is who we know they are right and then special installment amazing spider will, will debut a mysterious new villain called obsidian star so there's a new villain in there mm. definitely could have a better name than that but <laughs> <laughs> nice house on the lake obsidian star yeah you know, obsidian star whatever <laughs> all right so we get dark ages number three yes. coming out uh been a solid series so far yeah issue one was great yeah issue two, issue was, two was okay was yeah and i'm hopeful issue three is wonderful again yeah exactly yeah but plot will thicken a little bit i think in the in that third issue there yeah then uh nightwing number 86 one of our favorite books but is it still fair state or yeah yeah i think it's a batgirl story if i remember correctly okay. i don't remember how things ended but i think the last issue was a very big batgirl story right yeah that's so. true okay and then finally we have superman son of kal-el number five tom taylor was talking I mean to anderson cooper recently right um, yeah. I'm ready for the kiss. I'm ready for the story. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Yeah. And technically, that, of course, that came out today. But yes. Mm -hmm. So our viewers may have already read that, but don't. Yeah. It, it was brought up earlier in the show. Did you? Oh, was it? I didn't. I missed yeah. it. So, so look forward to it. And then I'll, I'll get it tomorrow and obviously read it. And I'll probably talk about it in the next day or whatnot. So. so. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's it, right, guys? I think we're, we're going to wrap it up. Do you guys have anything else that you want to say before we close out the show tonight? Um, just that uh, we actually did get over 500 backers as I've been nice. sitting here. So we got, I think we're up to like 504. Let's see. We're up to 504 backers. So uh, again, our goal would be to get to 600 by the end. Uh, we have two days left and Slice of Life. It's about an anime character. comes to life and falls in love with a high school cheerleader. Um, other than that, I'll have my best comics of the week tomorrow and, uh, look forward to a young justice review. Other than that, um, I have a lot of family stuff going on this week, so I'll probably be a little off the radar towards the end of the week, but, um, I'll try my best to get things out as I can. Also guys, uh, I just wanted to say this, um, just a reminder next week, there will be no show. It, it's going to be Thanksgiving week. 
Um, Which Brant wasn't on for this, so Brant, yeah. there's no show next Brand, week. <laughs> <laughs> next week so you know. um, just because there's a lot of ho- holiday things going on. Sure. Um, you know, kids don't have school and stuff, so there's all kinds of plans going on and uh, and stuff like that. I got to get ready for family to come over. So we're going to take the week off next week and enjoy the holiday, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. So, uh, Brant, you have anything else to say? Yeah, sounds good. We'll be back just in time for my Kickstarter to end. Uh, there it'll, we go. It'll be we'll ending be that week. Time, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, my just my Kickstarter again, um, which you can find at lastsimpress.com slash dragon. Uh, it's a cyberpunk fantasy comic about a mercenary named Kinzo who is tasked with kidnapping a child that holds the secret that could shift the balance of power between two warring corporations. Akira style, Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, Tron, uh, anything cyberpunk. Uh, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, you're going to love this one. So go check it out. All right, guys. And then me, of course, um, I am getting my books later tomorrow because of that diamond debacle that happened. Um, they are coming in tomorrow, but they won't be in until tomorrow afternoon. So it's just a matter of when I go to the shop. So with me doing my comic book haul, it might be be tomorrow night or it might not actually be till thursday so we'll see and of course that puts a little bit of delay on my week itself so just be prepared in case you are wondering where my videos are at um but with that being said guys thank you so much for watching tonight thank you so much for the super chats thank you so much for the comments thank you so much for the likes and if you haven't given this video a like yet and you're still watching go ahead and give it a like uh you know give it a thumbs up of course hit the bell for notifications if you haven't subscribed to comic book weekly or comic book corner 2.0 go ahead and do that right now and uh follow us on our social media which is on facebook twitter instagram and of course youtube so guys thank you so much have a great thanksgiving and uh we'll see you all in two weeks enjoy those comics everyone good night